time to play that game that uh, I always play when doing recordings like this, and let's figure out where the heck I left off. So, Secret Passage. You're cross-examining, you believe? One of the passage stairs hidden behind a bookcase in the library? Okay. As I recall, you were, the, you were there with us when he found the secret passage. Yeah. Phoenix found it by accident when he triggered that secret switch. And you told the police about that when you were being questioned yesterday. Of course. But that's not all they asked me about, because... The thing is, I was in the room. You were in the library the whole time? Why? Truth is, I was kind of freaked out when Argus explained the game to us. Because you realized that it was the same as Isla's murder three years ago. Yeah, me and Isla were dating, so it was kind of tough for me. When all this murder mystery stuff started happening, I just wanted to be alone. And that's why you hid yourself in the library. We're all very sympathetic towards your loss, I assure you. Yeah, anyways. I mean, nobody could use the passage without being seen. Don't you think that someone could have sneaked past without you noticing? Uh, I don't know. That secret door makes a lot of noise when it opens. I don't think I'd miss it if someone went through there. He's probably right. I remember the sound of the bookcase sliding into the floor. Looks like I'll need to take another approach. Sorry, dude. All good, dude. We already found one secret passage. Who's to say there wasn't another? Nox's third law. This, is, this isn't a detective novel. It's real life. I'm pulling your leg, Fraulein. Let it be known that the police searched the manor thoroughly for any such passages. But they still could have missed something. Well, if you have evidence of this second passage, then please present it. He called my bluff. Is there some damaging testimony? Nobody went upstairs via the staircase or the secret passage. I know. There has to be another possibility somewhere. Hmm. I the evidence that leaves you to the victim. Where'd we find the, uh... How do we go about this? Genuinely not sure. We could do the obvious thing and say you could have used it. Objection. At face value, this testimony sounds similar to what Mr. Iving told us about the staircase. There's one big difference. Whereas I was there to back up Mr. Iving's claims. You, by your own admission, were in the library all by yourself. The, uh? The fact is that you could have opened that passageway without anyone noticing. As sorry as I am to say this, Ken, you must also consider you a suspect in Archistrator's murder. You really think it was him? I'm not sure, but we can't deny the possibility. Well, witness, we're eager to hear your rebuttal. Uh, fine. I can prove that I didn't kill Arcus. You can? Very well. Please continue with your testimony. Well, 
Wait, what? Okay. Only have your word to go on. I didn't kill a goat that best, I swear. Only have your word to go on. Why are you accusing me? You used to be cool. Hey, I'm just doing my job. Well, let's see what you have to say about this. You can complete the task for the envelope he gave me. Okay. If you're talking about motive, and Mr. Wright doesn't have one either. But unlike Herr Wright, we have no proof that this witness was even upstairs at the time. In other words, I need to cast as much doubt as I can to make Ken out as a suspect. You said that you completed the task in your envelope. Does that mean that the victim was blackmailing you as well? Oh, well... The specifics as to what Herr Strader uh, held of this witness's head aren't, aren't important now. What we do know is that, like Herr Irving, the witness would have no motive. As long as he was able to complete the objective that the victim gave him. Ken's objective. Just think about what that letter said. Whether Ken really did complete it or not. Seems it means Derek is the only other way. Ooh, okay. Okay, so that, that just completely changed the testimony there. Okay, so now we present the victim's letter. Objection. You completed the task you were given? That's a lie. <laughs> How do you know that? Let's take a look at the envelope that Prosecutor Gavin presented earlier. Your role is the lover. Go hide the evidence that links you to the victim. The lover? I'm sure that this was meant to reference this witness's previous relationship with Isla Strader. Now, I'd like the court to take a look at this piece of evidence Mr. Wright and I found that night. This is a letter written by the victim in the murder mystery game, who, as we've established, is supposed to represent Mistress, Miss Strader. It's also been addressed to her lover. A witness, in other words. Uh, which means this letter acts as a link between Ken, the lover, and the victim. No doubt in my mind this is the evidence that Ken's role instructs him to hide. No! Was that letter? But Miss Sykes, if that letter has been in your possession this since that night. Exactly. There's no way that Ken could have completed his task so long as Mr. Wright and I had this letter. No way! So what did you hide, Ken? He obviously hid something. To make him think that he completed his task. The question is what? The witness wouldn't have been able to retrieve that letter, meaning that the secret air strata was holding above his head, whatever that might be, would be revealed. That's exactly right. Which means Ken Forza had a motive for Archistrator's murder. And let's not forget that he also had access to the crime scene via the secret passage. No matter which way you look at it, this, this must be considered a suspect. Why me? Well, witness, we're eager to hear your side of the story. Tell us, what were you really doing at the time of the murder? I... I told you already. I was in the library the entire time. I find that hard to believe. After all, you knew what would happen if you didn't complete your task that night. There's no doubt in my mind that you went searching for this letter. Ugh. Is this true, witness? Fine. I admit it. I left the library that night. If I didn't kill anyone, I could never do that. Perhaps you should start telling us what you know. Starting with whatever the meaning behind this letter is. Ugh. It's all because of what happened three years ago. Marcus was holding a party to celebrate the success of Bar Link. Isla told me he helped fund the company, which is why he invited all of those suits to his manor. Isla had always been working closely with those guys because she was into all that journalism stuff. It was only invited because me and Isla were dating at the time. It was only invited because me and Isla were dating at the time. 
When I showed up, Argus told me that she was in the study, and that she'd be down soon. I hung around in the main hall for a while, but she never showed. I got kind of worried. That's why I told Arcus that I was going upstairs to use the bathroom. But really, it was just an excuse for me to check on Isla in the study. I opened the door and... I found her dead. She'd been stabbed. I screamed when I saw that. I was about to go tell the others. That's when I noticed it. A letter. It was on top of the desk and it had my name at the top. I thought it might be some kind of dying message from Isla. I guess that was a pretty dumb idea when I looked back at it. Still, what's in that letter was almost even more shocking than a dying message. Isla was planning on breaking up with me. She wrote some stuff about how she was worried about putting me in some kind of danger. That it would be safest if we split up. Even though she didn't want to either. Just like the letter that we found during the game. When I was done reading the letter, I stuffed it in my pocket. Before I went back downstairs to tell everyone that Isla had been killed. You removed evidence from the crime scene? Why? I was already worried that I would be accused of killing Isla because I was the first person to find her. I thought that if the police knew about that letter, I might think I killed her because I was angry about the breakup or something. So you hid the letter because it could potentially be used to prove a motive. I'm no psycho. Even if I was upset, I would never hurt Isla over something like that. I didn't think the police would believe me, so... And if it was discovered that you took the letter, things would get even worse for you. A motive for the murder. An opportunity. And you even hid evidence from the police. That was what Air Strader was using to blackmail you, wasn't it? Huh? It's all very clear once you take a look at the witness's role. Air Strader must have known all about the letter that his daughter wrote. When it went missing from the crime scene. Would have figured out that the witness took it. So it would ensure his, partici his participation in the murder recreation. Air Strader made a copy of the letter and invited the witness to steal it back from him. Ensuring that his crime from three years ago would remain hidden. That's how it all went down, huh? That's seriously messed up. Just like he had proof of Connor Iving's crime. Mr. Strader also had proof about what Ken did back then. He must have learned about the letter from Isla. Ken did say that she did keep secrets from, her f secrets from her father. Enough about the past. Let us move on to the present. You weren't in the library the whole time, were you? Uh, okay. I'll tell the truth. I did leave the library to go looking for the evidence I was supposed to find. I didn't want anyone else to know what I was doing, though. That's why I used the secret pass that Mr. Wright found to get upstairs. Read my envelope. I figured that Arcus must have known about three years ago. If it was the same this time, the evidence I was looking for had to be in the study. But we already took it. Went straight there, passing by the master bedroom door, which was closed at the time. I searched for a bit, but I couldn't find the letter anywhere. Because Mr. Wright and I had already taken it from the study. I searched for 15 minutes. Figured I was running out of time and I panicked, so... I just grabbed the only other thing I could find in the study and hoped it would be good enough. Went straight back to the library and hid it all back... Hid it all at the... Hid it at the back of a bookshelf. Wait a second. You took something else from the study? What was it? Huh? Oh, well, that was... That knife with all that red paint over it. Aha! Uh -huh. You... took... What? Well, that's... Uh... I'll be damned. Order. Witness. What is the meaning of this? 
I don't, I don't understand what everyone is so upset about. They took the knife on a whim because it was the only other thing that looked important in the study. The whole reason that the police concluded that the murder weapon was the knife in the, st in the study is because it wasn't there after the murder. Now you're telling us that you were the one that took it? Say what? I didn't know anything about that. I only took the knife and hid it in the library. I didn't stab anyone with it. Seriously. Go check it yourself if you don't believe me. I can't believe this is the first I'm hearing of this. Dude, I'm sorry. I really didn't think it was a big deal. <sighs> Fine. We can work with this. Your Honor, I'd have suggest sending an investigation team to verify the witness's claims. Very well. Bailiff, arrange for a search of the library. This leaves us with another problem. If the murder weapon was not the knife that came from the study, then what? You, you know, don't you, Athena? Yeah. It's the only thing that makes sense. The weapon used to kill the victim was... Dining room steak knife? The murder weapon was one of the steak knives from the, from the dining room, of course. There were a few of these knives set out on the large dining table. All the killer had to do was grab it, grab it before they went upstairs. Yeah, the knife was in the, that was in the study wasn't the same as those in the dining room. Does that mean that the, that the knife that killed Isla four years ago was also taken from the dining room? Verifying the murder weapon should be quite easy. All we need to do is ask the investigation team. Check whether one of the pieces at the dining room table is missing a knife. In that case, we should wait for their findings. I hear my call for a three-minute recess. Jesus. Judge, judge needs a nap. Court is back in session with the trial of Phoenix Wright. Prosecutor Gavin, your report. I must admit that our witnesses' actions have thrown a wrench into things. It's just as we have deduced. This knife was found hidden in the library after a bit of direction from Air Forza. As you can see, it's covered in what appears to be bloodstains, but... Before you get too excited, I should tell you that this is just red paint which means that was the knife that was in the study. In other words, Mr. Strader's recreation of the murder weapon from three years ago. Furthermore, an investigation of the dining room revealed that one of the places that had been set was missing the very same type of steak knife that was found at the crime scene. Which means that the real murder weapon came from the dining room, not the study. Very well. Court accepts this new information. Ding ding. With that out of the way, let's talk about what all that's what all this means. Specifically about how this new information proves our witnesses' innocence. Say what now? Previously we assumed that the killer took the knife from the study upstairs and brought it into the next room to stab Air Strader. But now we know that the killer would also need to enter the dining room. In order to collect a knife from the table, it's a true murder weapon. As Sir Iving told us, nobody passed through the main hall at the time of the murder. Which means that this witness had no opportunity to get his hands on the murder weapon. Oh no! We're back where we started then? You see? I told you I didn't do it. The only knife I touched was the, ni was the one in the study. It wasn't really the murder weapon. Nobody passed through the main hall to get to the dining room. And Mr. Wright couldn't have taken the knife either. Objection! He took it beforehand. Don't think that you can fool me, Fraulein. You and Air Wright were in the dining room that night, weren't you? I have witnessed testimony placing the both of you there before the murder. 
That would have been during our investigation of the ma of the manor. I mean, the way it is, is he's talking about are Connor Ivan and Grace Barr. They were in there together at that time. Air Wright could have simply taken a knife when nobody was watching and hidden it on his person until he was alone upstairs with the victim. Air Ivan was in the dining room the whole time until he went back into the main hall. And not once did he see the witness clearing him of suspicion. Simple, yeah? <laughs> so, Mr. Forza really couldn't have killed the victim. Which, I'm afraid, leaves the defendant as the only one who could have done it. This isn't good. Looks like I've gone back to being the only suspect. Now what do we do? Well, there is one thing. You mean you found a way out of this? It's a possibility. Think about it. At the time of the murder, Connor Ivick was in the main hall, with you. It means that no one could have used the main staircase to reach the master bedroom. But you propose that the killer could have used the secret passage in the library instead. Gavin's response was that Ken, was that Ken Forza was in the library at the whole time. It means that nobody could have used the passage without him noticing. But if they used the passage while he was already upstairs... Ken wasn't in the library the whole time. Because he left for around 15 minutes to search the, search the study. Exactly. 15 whole minutes. Both the library and the upstairs hallway were totally empty. Which would mean... Your Honor, I'm going to need you to hold off on that verdict. Is there something you have to say, Miss Sykes? There's another possibility that we need to consider. Now that we know that the witness was not in the library the whole time, there could potentially be a different suspect in this case. Oh? Who might that be? Connor and I were in the main hall. Ken and Mr. Wright were upstairs. The killer must have been inside this room immediately before the murder, the lounge. Two people in the lounge, of course. As we've just heard, the witness wasn't in the library the entire time. That means that the secret passage leading upstairs was unguarded at one point. Ah, yes. I suppose it was. Didn't we establish that nobody could have passed through the main hall at that time? Somebody had attempted to reach the library. Mr. Iving and yourself would have would have spotted them. Au contraire, Your Honor. All I need to do is take another look at the manor floor plan. Well, it's true that there is a door leading to the library and the main hall. There's actually a second door that leads in, leads in from the lounge. In other words, somebody at the lounge could reach the library without needing to pass through the main hall. And because the library was empty at that time... They would not have had access to the, they would have had access to the crime scene. Ah, ah! But who's the who was the lounge at that time? There were two people actually. Ronald Barr was there since the game began, and his wife Grace. She was with Ivan for most of the night, but they split up just before the murder. Grace went to the lounge while Ivan stayed in the hall. In a nutshell. Both Mr. and Mrs. Barr must be considered suspects. Seriously? It's one of them? Very well. We should hear more about these potential suspects. Your thoughts, Prosecutor Gavin? If the crowd demands an encore, I am more than happy to oblige. Air Barr is in the lobby. I had a feeling we might require his testimony at some point. He should be able to tell us about what he and his wife were up to at the time of the murder. Second thought, I'm not so sure that I want to hear about this. Bailiff, please bring Ronald Barr to the stand. Here we go. Your name and occupation, please. You're implying that everyone doesn't already know who I am. Just pretend that we don't. It's just a formality. My name is Ronald Barr. I'm CEO of Bar Link. 
I would mean that the witness before, from before was your employee. That's right. We are both acquainted with Strader through our work. As he has been a significant shareholder for quite some time. Ebba, do you know why you have been called to the stand? Not a clue. I've been in the prosecution lobby for this whole time. I see. In that case, let's allow the Fraulein over there to fill you in. Uh-huh. You want me to tell him? You're the reason he was brought here in the first place. It's only fair. Prosecutor Gavin might be cute. There's only so much teasing that I can take. Well, I'd better just come out and say it. I think there's a possibility that you might be involved in the murder, Mr. Barr. You do, hmm? Huh. That was more tame reaction than I expected from the guy. Did he... see this coming? Yes, well, um... It's come to our attention that there was a point in time when the library was left empty. It means it was possible for someone in the lounge to reach the crime scene undetected. By entering the library through the south door and using the secret passage upstairs. That'd make both you and your wife potential suspects in Strader's murder. I see. In interesting. I want to put a lot of work into my presentation there. Give me something, at least. Perhaps you could tell us about your movements on that night. If that's all you need, fine. I don't like that smile of his. I'd be careful if I were you, Athena. Bar clearly has something up his sleeve ready this time. Let's hear what he has to say for himself. In the lounge. When the game first began, I went straight to the lounge. I had no reason to go wandering around the manor, so I remained there until around 9.50pm. At around 9.10, Grace entered the lounge from the main hall. We were together in that room the whole time. Ask her yourself if you like. You see, that gives us both an alibi for the time of the murder. I see. You were in the main lounge together. For the entirety of the time window in which the victim could have been killed. That means that you can each, each vouch for the other's innocence. I should mention that Miss Barr gave the same story during her questioning yesterday. Their alibis check out. That's not good for us. I guess this, I guess this explains why he was so confident earlier. Yeah? This would leave myself and Ken as the, only people, as the only two people without alibis. We've already proven that Ken couldn't be the killer. Which leaves us in a sticky situation... Miss Sykes, please begin your cross-examination. That's a funky thing about it. this. Is very. I'm really, I'm really loving this because it feels like we're making progress, and yet at the same time we're not making any progress. It feels like we're proving stuff and learning new shit, while still being stuck on not having any way of proving that Nick, not having any way of validating another suspect. Right. There's gotta be something I can do. I can just find any small flaw in this testimony. There may still be a chance for us. In the lounge. Why the lounge, if I might ask? Hmm. You've got a law degree with that kind of ignorance. I should think it was quite obvious why I went to the lounge. What an absolute simpleton wouldn't know by now. I apologize for my ignorance. Please tell me why you went to the lounge. Well, obviously that's because that's where the comfiest chairs are. Of course. How foolish of me. Moving on. Present your role? You didn't leave the room once during the whole game. Not even to go to the bathroom. 
why would I need to go there? What do you think? It was not like Strader was even serving any drinks, so... What about the cocktail glass you've been holding since two nights ago? Is the implication that he brought it from home? Weirdo. Anyway, I guess the main question I have to ask here is... Would Bar have any reason to leave the lounge that night? Grace had, been, Grace had been with Connor Iving up until she met you in the lounge, correct? That's what she told me. At some point, the two of them decided to split up. They left the dining room together, but while Connor stayed in the, in the main hall, Grace walked all the way across and entered the lounge from the door on the, from the, door on the east side. And what did the two of you do after that? We were together in the, that room the whole time. Ask her yourself if, you, if you'd like. What do we do the whole time? What what rich what rich arranged couples always do is sit there and say nothing to each other. What were you doing in there? Just talking. Of course. What else would we be doing? Nothing I care to think about. That's for sure. Mr. Wright and I split up outside Mr. Strader's room at 9:20 p.m. Strader was alive then, but when we returned to his room at around 9.50, he had, he had been stabbed. It means the murder happened at some point during those 30 minutes. If this testimony is the truth, then neither of the bars could have done it. I hate to state the obvious here, but couldn't the two of you just be covering for each other? You're married, after all. That's not the kind of accusation that you can just throw out there without proof, Fraulein. Nobody else saw the witness or his partner anywhere else at that time. So that you can prove that they were not in the lounge. This testimony stands. Yeah, I didn't think you'd let me get away with that one. I don't know what Ivan's testimony is going to give us, but proof it is then. So in essence, we have a similar situation to the one we had with Mr. Ivan. Remember? We established that neither of you could have been the killer. Because you were together in the main hall at the time of the murder. But I know that I can be trusted. What if Mr. Barr and his wife are lying to protect each other? That's a possibility, but you'll need to prove it first. Just be careful. Overthrowing this premise could land you back in hot water. Then we, we, then we would be in real trouble. Okay, here's what I think. I'm gonna present his role. You had no reason to leave the, the lounge. I find that difficult to believe, after all. You had a pressing need to speak to the other guests in the manor. What makes you say that? The role you were given at the start of the game, the snoop, required you to go out and find the roles of every other guest in the manor that night. How could you have done that if you were in the lounge all night? I'm positive that you would have left to speak with the other guests. Oh, do be quiet. As I told you that night, I had no intention of playing along with straight or silly game. Surely you would, have, you would have wanted to stop Strader from revealing your role. Why would I let something like that bother me? All right. Bar would have missed our discussion from earlier. In that case, I'll just need to show him. You know the secret. You know the secret that Strader was holding against Bar. Bar was given the role of the snoop. How do we know that the other guests' roles were alluding to some kind of secret about them? It's pretty clear what Ronald Barr's secret is. Hmm. I genuinely don't know what to present here.
the article? Oh, he's willing he's willingly selling data. Yeah, he's willingly selling data from his social networking site and playing it off as something internally going wrong. Ah, oh, that's right, yeah. Shit, he's fucking Zuckerberging it up in his in this house. The Snoops were always to gather information about the other guests. Strader wanted you to learn the roles of everyone else before the end of the game. But that's not all. There's no doubt in my mind. That Strader was suggesting that you were the one behind the info leaks at Bar Link. Hmm. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't understand what this is about. As we know, Bar Link is one of the biggest social networking sites around. Because of that, they had access to a huge wealth of personal information. Information that was being sold illegally by an unknown party. Oh my, how scary. And you're saying that the one behind it all was none other than the CEO himself? That's a bold claim to make when the only thing you have is that vague message. Are you really going to deny the similarities between this incident and the role you were given? You still have no evidence that I had anything to hide. Perhaps she doesn't, but Strater certainly did. It's just like the documents on the stolen money. Strater was holding a report that directly accuses you of the scandal at Bar Link. You what? Ah, this will be bad for business. So I was right. Strader was blackmailing you, just as he was with the other guests. Hmm. If I could ask a question, how did Strader get this information in the first place? Who wrote that report? You don't know by now. Is that surprising, after all? Isla did. You heard about Strader's daughter, didn't you? Isla? What about her? The young Fraulein was working inside Bar Link as a business journalist. But I don't think that she was doing this purely out of an academic interest. Rather, she was there to root out the corruption in the company her family was so invested in. She was there to investigate the scandal? So information leaks, some missing money, and some even more personal information. It was all written in this report that she gave to her father. All of this was bla was backed with evidence taken from the company. The financial reports that Air Iving had tampered with. And a series of emails sent from Ronald Barr's address that prove his illicit dealings. She gathered it all herself from inside the company. Away. Is that the real is that the reason that Isla was murdered three years ago? What? It appears you understand. Ja, I believe this is why. She had incriminating evidence concerning each of these guests. Then each one of them would have would have a motive for her murder. Although forces was only what he did when he discovered her body. So he's the odd man out. Oh my. Ken would, Ken would have been the only exception. He didn't work at Bar Link after all. The Strader still considered him a suspect because he knew about that missing letter from Isla. All of the pieces fall into place. Without a doubt, the killer from three years ago was one of the guests in this game. However, we're not currently here to discuss that matter. Who murdered Air Strader? So that's why we're here. Right. And thanks to that report that you showed us. We know that the witness also had a motive for this murder. What do you have to say for yourself, Mr. Barr? Eh. He's got that confident look again. What now? I had a motive to kill Strader. You're sadly mistaken. Listen here. I didn't need to kill anyone. Because I had already completed the goal I was given in that game. This argument again? So he really did go elsewhere in the manor that night. Not at all. I still maintain that I was in the lounge the entire time. How were you able to learn the roles of the other guests if you didn't speak to them? You want to hear about it? Very well. 
First role I learned was yours, Miss Sykes. I'm sure I don't need to remind you about our little exchange. That was when we first met in the lounge, yeah? I'll just give you one of those colored envelopes, correct? The ones with our rolls inside? Yeah, he did. Ah! Ow! Hey! That was why you snatched the envelope off, me, off of me back then. I heard Strata saying that you and Mr. Wright shared your role. That left three roles for me to uncover. This was when Grace first entered the lounge. There you are, darling. You and Connor have been speaking for quite a while. Yes, well, we were just catching up. I see you're still holding on to your envelope there. But suppose you wouldn't mind if I took a look at it. W wait! You can't! Nonsense! Give it here! The Seductress? What is this supposed to mean? It's just a game. It doesn't mean anything. Hmm. So my suspicions were correct. The envelope mentions the thief. And judging from where you've been, I take it that's Connor. Yes. Connor is the thief. Oh, so Grace failed. Grace failed. Remember, Grace's role is to only reveal your identity to the thief. Just, I should have known. Seems I can't trust anyone, can I? So you knew that Mr. Iving was the one stealing the money all along? I suspected him for a while, yes. Once I realized the truth behind what Strader's game really was, there was no doubt in my mind. What about your wife's role? Do you know what the seductress means? Hmm. I'm under oh, no obligation to talk about that with you. The point is that I learned both of their roles from Grace. That still leaves out Ken Forza's role. If you were in the lounge the entire time, how could you know what his envelope said? I used this. Ah, isn't that Strader's written account? The one we found in the lounge. After learning the roles of the other three guests, I realized that their titles were the same as the ones used in this testimony. That's right. The thief, the seductress, the snoop, and the lover. They're all there. From there, it was a simple matter of elimination. The lover was the only role remaining, meaning it must have belonged to that kid. I'd also really realized by this point that our roles were meant to reference us personally. It would make sense that the boyfriend of Strader's daughter would be given that ra that alias. Huh. Guess that all checks out. You'll recall that I have been in the prosecutor's lobby since the trial began. Ego, had I not learned of everyone's roles on the night of the crime, I could not have recounted them all for you as I just did. In other words, my testimony proves that I completed the goal that Strader gave to me. Which means that I had absolutely no motive to kill him. Oh no! So that was a very clear explanation, witness. Well, Miss Sykes, anything to add? Proven time and time again. But someone who was able to complete their goal wouldn't have a motive to kill Strader. Does that mean this guy really had nothing to do with it? There's no way I can buy that this that this easily. Athena. Mr. Wright? What is it? Don't you think that we're getting too stuck on this one line of thinking? What do you mean? Barr completed his goal in the murder mystery. Therefore, he had no motive. Doesn't that sound a little simplistic? Maybe if this were a game, that explanation, that explanation would be fine. But real life is rarely so simple. I... I don't understand. That's been the basis for this entire case so far. Well, that's true. Just because there was no problem with it then, doesn't mean there can't be one now. Broken clock is right twice a day? You've heard that, right? Why don't we prove to Barr just how broken its explanation is? 
So, you're saying that there's another reason? Another reason for why Bar would want Strader dead? We now know what Strader's murder mystery game truly was. Take a close look at the evidence, and you might see what I mean. I think that would give Bar a reason to kill Strader. I think besides keeping his involvement in the Bar Link scandal a secret, what else could Bar be hiding that would drive him that far? We're waiting, Miss Sykes. Do you take issue with the witness's claims or not? Get yourself together, Athena. It's now or never. Actually, there is one problem I have. I don't think that keeping his role a secret was the only reason this witness had for murder. You have more. You really enjoy dragging my name through the mud, don't you? Look for the evidence and the truth should reveal itself. Truth. It has to be. Reference the uh, the Snoop is in the library. False. This is the witness's motive. I don't understand. That was a mistake. Bar wasn't trying to invite his hide his involvement in the data leaks. Could only have been one more thing that he was trying to cover up. This traitor's game would have revealed no matter what. Okay, is wife's infidelity? False. Hmm. Okay, I was on the right track with the. Uh, Witness testimony. Because remember we talked in a previous video how the Snoop was in the library? And the library has a secret passage? So it didn't take the witness's account, but it will take Isla's profile. Looks like we're about to get in the right in the heart of this case. There was something else that the witness would have wanted to hide. I think that Strader would have revealed even if Barr had done exactly as his role had told him. You're saying the witness was responsible for something even more than this scandal? You really can't help yourself from slandering my good name, can you? Good name? Don't make me laugh. Because you're the one responsible for this entire case. Explain yourself! Strader put his game together for one reason. Catch the killer. In other words, the one who killed his daughter three years ago. Ronald Barr. That killer is you! What? So you finally made the accusation that Air Strader was waiting for. Wait just a moment. You can't claim something like that without evidence. I have evidence. Huh? Strader's game provided me with all the proof I needed to prove, to prove your guilt. This is the evidence that implicates you and Isla's murder. Now the witness, witness account? There it is. The answer lies in orchestrator's testimony about the night of the crime. That paper that, th that the victim left as evidence in the game. As Prosecutor Gavin told us earlier, this is a copy of the testimony that the victim gave the police. About the night on which his daughter was killed. It tells us about the movements of the guests during the, during the party three years ago. Ah. And this murder went unsolved for three years because there was no solid evidence to implicate any one of the guests. After all, the murder occurred in the study upstairs. Everyone else was downstairs. Strader only saw one person go upstairs. That was Ken, when he first discovered the body. There was one thing that Strader and, by extension, the police were not aware of. A secret passage that connects the library with the upstairs hallway. I'm sorry? Did you say, secret passage? 
No way. You seriously didn't know? It's a secret door behind the bookshelf that could be used to get to the upstairs hallway. You're joking. That can't be. The straighter was a smart guy. I'm sure he realized at that point that the killer must have used that passage to reach the study un undetected. Only one person would have had access to that passage from, the d from downstairs. The person who was by themselves in the library. You, Ronald Barr. You were the only one. Ah! Order, order, here we go. That's not good enough. After all, you said yourself that Strader saw that kid go upstairs before the body was found. Would that make him the more likely suspect? I don't think so. Trader's testimony that Ken was only... says that Ken was only upstairs for a few minutes at most. You already know that he saw and hid this letter at the time. There's no way he could have also had enough time to murder Isla. Especially because the evidence shows that the killer got their hands covered in blood when she died couldn't hide evidence, kill the victim, and clean himself up at all. All within a couple of minutes. Which means that the murder must have occurred before Ken ever reached the scene. And you were the only one capable of doing that. Ah! What about uh, Iving? The illustrator tells us that he was in the lounge at the time. Which, as we've already said, would have also given him access to the secret passage get into the library without Air Strater seeing him if he used the north door. I highly doubt that was the case. So this witness really was in the library the whole time, as he claims. I'm sure he would have mentioned seeing Ivan pass through and open the secret passageway. How would this witness know about that passage's existence in the first place? It's not difficult to imagine that he stumbled upon it by accident. After all, I did the same thing myself when we were in the, when we were in the library. Right. The only reason Strader didn't know about it was because he very rarely was it, went to the library himself. How about it, Witness? Tell us what really happened three years ago. Hmm. Murder mystery game. Marcus Strader's murder. The death of Isla Strader three years ago. It's time for us to uncover the truth behind everything. And a part two. And a part two. And we'll resume part three next time.